This video demonstrates how to use electrical muscle stimulation to recover or improve function in the vastus medialis obliquus muscle at the knee. It is not intended to replace professional advice. I hope the video will be useful to rehabilitation practitioners who may not be familiar with the use of electrical muscle stimulation for rehabilitation exercise. For patients with any kind of leg or knee problem, you should always be guided by your practitioner. Electrical muscle stimulation can be a bit daunting when you're first faced with it. Some people have a fear of electric shock. But of all electrotherapy treatments, muscle stimulation is among the safest. You should be aware of safety precautions. Always follow instructions to the letter. Be aware of contraindications. Never connect a battery-operated machine to the mains. Keep the machine away from children or anyone who has not been taught how to use it properly. EMS has certain well-defined effects when used for rehabilitation exercise, which have been demonstrated in scientific research over the last 40-odd years. Its primary effect, when used on muscles like the vastus medialis obliquus, is to retrain the motor nerve to the muscle. It helps to regain function in the motor nerve, to fine-tune the motor nerve, and these are its most important effects in rehabilitation work. A favourite fantasy is that just by attaching the electrodes and turning up the current, Muscles will be toned, fat will be lost. Dream on. Sadly, that's not the case. Electrical muscle stimulation is an active rehabilitation treatment. It will only work if the muscles involved are being contracted alongside the current. The vastus medialis obliquus is a small muscle which lies above the inner side of the knee. It can be very poorly defined and it can be extremely well defined. But even if it is quite prominent to see, it may not be functioning to its best level. The VMO fulfills very precise roles in the actions of the leg. It's the only muscle which holds and controls the kneecap from the inner side. It counterbalances the actions of the bigger quadriceps muscles of which it is a part, on the front and outer side of the thigh. When the knee is straight, the VMO contracts to draw the kneecap upwards and slightly inwards. When the knee is fully straightened as hard as it can be, the VMO acts to lock the kneecap in place on the front of the thigh. Whenever the knee is bent or straightened, the VMO is active in holding the kneecap in its groove and helping to prevent it from being drawn to the outer side. In my experience, the VMO benefits from electrical muscle stimulation in a very wide variety of situations. Like all the other active muscles in the body, the VMO can become inhibited, that is, it stops working normally, for a number of different reasons. These include any kind of injury to the knee joint, and also bent knee activities such as marathon running, hill walking, cycling with the saddle too low, and playing squash. Growth spurts can have an effect in young children and teenagers. Being sedentary also severely undermines VMO function. Once the VMO has stopped working properly, it is extremely difficult to regain its function through exercise alone. The VMO is a very small part of the quadriceps muscle group on the front of the thigh. When the VMO is inhibited, the larger muscles in the group tend to take over and prevent it from functioning again. That is why electrical muscle stimulation is vital for recovering VMO function after any knee injury and in many cases of more generalised leg injuries, unless of course it is contraindicated for any reason. Electrical muscle stimulation has been used in rehabilitation practice for very many years.
The apparatus used for electrical muscle stimulation has evolved over time. Early models were based on the smart Bristow coil where one slid a bar in and out of a coil to create the electrical impulse. Later on there were faradic machines where the pulse rate, the hertz rate, was set to quite a high level at about 80 hertz, 80 pulses per second or more. Heavy duty machines such as the Chattanooga electrical muscle stimulator offered the practitioner a wide variety of opportunities. With four channels, different parts of the body could be treated at the same time. As the channels could be alternated, opposing muscle groups could be stimulated in a functional pattern. The readout is useful because it allows the practitioner to assess progress. As the motor nerve becomes more efficient, the milliampers required to make it work are reduced. Besides being an invaluable part of the treatment by a practitioner, electrical muscle stimulation can also be used for self-help home treatments, so long as there is no specific contraindication to this. Following injury, it can be part of the remedial exercise program. It can help to make recovery quicker, and it can also help to prevent re-injury. Even after recovery from knee injury or in the absence of an injury, electrical muscle stimulation for the VMO can be helpful in protecting the knee and hip from possible problems. For VMO muscle stimulation, it's best to have one bigger and one smaller electrode. The muscle stimulator should stay switched off as you set it up for use. You may need to prepare the lead by separating the wires a little bit and then you insert one wire into each of the electrodes. It doesn't matter which wire goes into which electrode as it's an alternating current. Then you place the other end of the wire into the contact point on the machine. It doesn't matter which channel you plug into as both channels are the same. To work the vastus medianus obliquus, your leg has to be straight at the knee. So you need a comfortable position where your leg can be straight and your back is supported. If you are using rubber electrodes, you need to wetten the sponges which go underneath them to create contact and leave them fairly wet so that they do not dry out during the treatment session. Place the bigger sponge and the bigger electrode somewhere up on the inner side of the thigh. The smaller sponge and electrode go over the motor point of the vastus medialis obliquus, just above the inner side of the knee. Experience shows where the best point will be for any individual. Fasten the straps comfortably over the electrodes if you're using straps. If the strap is too tight and too close to the kneecap, the kneecap might be sore when you start to work with the current. If that happens, just turn the machine off, move the electrode and the strap slightly, and then start again. When the electrodes are securely and comfortably fastened in place, you can turn the machine on and then carefully turn the current up. Do this gradually until you feel a tingling in between the electrodes. And if you can, if it's not uncomfortable, keep turning the current up just until the muscle starts to twitch and contract so that you can feel and see the movement. When the current is making the muscle twitch comfortably, you can start to work with it. 
very gently following the current, twitch the vastus medialis muscle to move the kneecap a little way upwards without activating the outer thigh muscles, if at all possible. This is a very subtle movement, which is the first step to regaining control of the vastus medialis obliquus motor nerve. In some cases, the knee cannot be straightened fully comfortably. This can happen following injury or in certain types of arthritis. In this case, it's best to support the knee with a folded towel or a small roll. The knee support should be soft so that as the VMO comes into action, the knee is allowed to straighten comfortably within its limits. Over time, with the work on the VMO, the knee should be able to straighten better than at the beginning. The second work phase is to straighten the knee as hard as it can go following the current. In the normal knee, the heel will lift slightly off the floor or support. This is called hyperextension. The normal range of hyperextension at the knee is just a few degrees. Some people have an abnormal level of hyperextension at the knee which makes it look as though the knee can bend backwards almost and in this case the knee should not be extended to its fullest degree but only to about halfway or three quarters. A progression from working with hyperextension of the knee is to extend the knee over a firm support so that the heel is lifted up through about 30 degrees of movement at the knee. This can be made more difficult by adding a weight over the ankle to create a strengthening element in the VMO work. The final phase of progressing the work of vastus medialis obliquus with the electrical muscle stimulator is to place a rolled towel or a support of some kind under the heel and then tighten the thigh muscles and press the knee downwards as the current comes into action. The movement should be controlled and not forced in any way 
and it should not be done if it causes any pain or cramp. To sum up, make sure you're sitting comfortably before you begin. The leg you're working on must be straight. The electrical muscle stimulation current must be very mild. And you must make sure that you relax completely between each muscle contraction. There are four different types of muscle work that you can do for the vastus medialis obliquus with the electrical muscle stimulator. The most important of these is the finely controlled twitch. When using the muscle stimulator, you should concentrate on what you're doing so that you engage the nerve systems fully. When you're very familiar with the technique, you will be able to use the muscle stimulator effectively while doing other activities such as watching television or reading. You can choose to do a muscle stimulation session every day or whenever it's convenient. A session can last as little as five minutes or up to an hour, so long as you make sure that you space out the contractions that you're doing alongside the current. As a protective measure, electrical muscle stimulation for the vastus medialis obliquus can be done whenever you feel it's needed. It's particularly useful if you've been doing bent knee activities, and it's a good first aid measure if you have any kind of knock or twist to the knee. If you find that your muscles are sore or achy after doing the electrical stimulation, you're either turning the current up too high or trying to contract the muscles too hard. So you need to modify the way that you're working with the machine. You also need to be sure that you are drinking enough water so that you're not dehydrating. And if you're able to do front thigh muscle stretching, you should be doing more of that as well, lying on your stomach.